change your heart, change your life, change the planet. Hey everybody, how you doing? Hope you're well. I wanted to address some of the uh, comments I've been getting in recent videos and also give you an update, tell you what's going on. Uh, first off, I am getting a second opinion for my heel, uh, Achilles calcification. Probably going to get a third, maybe even a fourth. And yes, I will try some alternative therapies, experimental therapies and whatnot. I'm not giving up, but there is no magical cure for this. And the results of a lot of the alternative and experimental therapies are underwhelming at best. That doesn't mean that things cannot change. That doesn't mean that it can transform back into a tendon again and get rid of the calcium deposits, but I'm not I'm not holding my breath. It might happen. That'd be great. I'm going to work towards that, see what I can do, but uh, I'm not going to be disappointed if it doesn't happen. I will create an alternate life at the same time. I'm not going to put all my eggs in the running basket hoping that I can fix my heel. Okay? So that's how I work. I'll go for it, but I'm also going to be developing other things at the same time. So I'm seeing an orthopedist that specializes in sports injuries and sports rehabilitation who does practice um, some experimental therapies. So that's February 16th. And then on the 28th, which is two days, I'm going in, back in to uh, have my shoulder looked at because it's really problematic and it's stopping me from uh, doing a lot of other stuff like taking off my shirt. <laughs> hurts like hell. So I'm going to get that checked out as well. Email, email, hello, comments on my videos, yay. <laughs> and speaking of comments, I wanted to address some of the comments about why did my Achilles tendon calcify? Is it because I am eating way too much kale and cruciferous vegetables and the oxalates are going in and creating oxalate crystals in the tendon? Mm, it's highly unlikely. Um, there are a lot of people that don't eat any cruciferous vegetables and don't have any oxalates in their diet at all, which is most of America, by the way. And there's a lot of calcification of uh, tendons out there. So this is not isolated to people who eat kale. Um, so how does it happen? Well, when you put the Achilles under a continued and pretty intense stress or load, you create micro tears in the tendon. And if you don't allow those micro tears to fully heal, which runners, especially competitive elite runners, pretty much never do, eventually the tendon is going to compensate by depositing calcium in there because it's not healing the normal way. So it's like, well, we gotta strengthen this thing up or it's gonna break, so let's put some calcium in there into these tears, put some deposits to kind of firm it up and solidify it because the stressor is not going away and the human body doesn't think long term it's not thinking well how is this going to affect me in 20 years it's thinking on the very short term like okay how is this going to get me to survive today or tomorrow um, how am I going to be able to run away from a predator how am I going to be able to fight or run something down if I don't have a tendon that works so let's fix it right now dirty ugly don't care All right just like scar tissue it's like, let's heal it up. We don't care what it looks like. We don't care if we lose function. Let's just get it done. So this is, in effect, a kind of scar tissue in the tendon. So why did I let this happen? Well, my soleus muscles, which are like the lower part of the calf, like the V underneath the heart, that's your soleus, they've been jacked on me ever since high school, since I was a teenager. When I ran track and cross country after every race and every hard workout, I couldn't walk for days because my soleus would be so inflamed. So there's something about my biomechanics that just is inclined towards my soleus being ridiculously tight. And when I started running raw, uh, my soleus were just jacked all the time. I mean, they were bulletproof. You could try to hammer a nail into them and it would just bounce off. Crazy. And after every race and again, every hard workout, my soleus would be in extreme pain. Uh, but I ran through it. I just kept running. And I also do a lot, or did, a lot of vertical training. I was trying to average between 1,500 and 2,000 feet of vertical climbing a day in my mountain runs. I almost never ran flat. 
most of my runs were in the mountains, so there was a lot of strain on the Achilles as you're going uphill um, on your toes. So I just overloaded them for far too long, too many years, and I just had bad biomechanics to begin with and didn't stretch that area enough. Um, I would stretch other parts of my body, foam roll other parts of my body, but my soleus were always so painful that I just couldn't bear um, working on them. It just hurt too much. So I didn't. And this is the price that I paid for that, for overloading them and not taking care of them properly. So for those of you that are running a lot or doing a lot of hill training, please make sure that you stretch your soleus and your Achilles. Uh, after every workout and also in between and start gently and warm into it and it's not a hard stretch that really hurts but you want to spend five to ten minutes there and just gradually ease into it and massage and foam roll uh, your soleus muscle below the calf get that worked out so that you don't end up in the same boat I'm in okay so that's where we're going many of you have been suggesting that I get into cycling and I have a mountain bike now, which I was using this fall. I don't use it now that it's winter. But I got it for $35, I think, at a yard sale. And I probably put another $50 worth of work into it. Had the derailleur replaced, new chain, new handle grips, and whatnot. And that's about the limit of how much I want to spend on exercise equipment. Um, biking is just too expensive, especially to be competitive. You really have to throw out some serious dough. And that's one of the things I loved about running. The most, ex or sorry, the fastest running shoes out there are the cheapest. Most of my racing flats were forty dollars or less. Um, so, yeah, cycling just doesn't really compete. My boot running in the woods, my snowshoeing, just so inexpensive. Uh, I just couldn't justify spending that much money on uh, a bike. And if you cycle, you know, that's great. That's awesome. But uh, for me, I just can't justify the expense, especially if I were to be competitive. Um, so I'd rather spend my money on traveling to places where I can give talks and help people and reach people, uh, things like that, um, or moving out of Vermont, <laughs> which is going to happen at some point, maybe in the next six months. Not sure where to yet. We shall see. Parts of New York are looking rather exciting at the moment. Anyway, so uh, yeah, I'm not sure what um, activity I can find that's going to help me get engaged in the world and not um, just drain my already tiny bank account, because <laughs> my teeth have already drained that. I um, could have bought a couple nice racing bikes with what I'm putting into my teeth. All right, um, so what am I doing for exercise right now? got my rowing machine, which is right there, my upright rower and I'm doing leg press at the gym and I'm doing squats. Ted Carr of 100 squats a day, he's been telling me to do 100 squats a day for quite a long time, so I'm doing 100 squats a day, Ted. <laughs> Plus uh, some other stuff. Um, trying to do some upper body to get into stair climbing shape, but my shoulder isn't really permitting that. So we'll see what's going on there and hopefully I can get into beastly stair climbing shape, but Training for a stair climb does nothing for me mentally or emotionally. Um, it usually stresses me out more because the workouts are so painful. So it's going to be hard to find a replacement for running, but that doesn't mean I can't. just haven't found it yet. Oh, toothpaste. Something people have been asking about that with my dental routine. Earth paste. An awesome friend in Canada got me some earth paste and also got me a CD by the Barr Brothers, which I love. Thank you very much. <laughs> A few of the things that I love about earth paste, number one, it has no glycerin in it. Most of these so-called healthy toothpastes on the market have glycerin in them. Even the Ayurvedic uh, toothpaste that I've seen that people highly recommend, glycerin prevents the teeth from remineralizing the enamel, or the saliva, sorry, from re remineralizing the enamel. Glycerin coats the teeth and stops that from happening. So you don't want a toothpaste with glycerin in it. Also, it's got xylitol in it, which is a natural sugar from a tree that uh, helps change the pH of your saliva so that your teeth can remineralize. It promotes remineralization. But if you've got glycerin in there, the two kind of counteract each other. Also, no fluoride, um, 
no artificial coloring, no foaming agents, because everybody wants their toothpaste to foam. But a lot of those foaming agents are really bad for you, so this does not foam up. Uh, the main component is Redmond Clay, and that's the company that makes it Redmond. So check that out. What else? Um, oh, <laughs> I did a video from bed the other day, and people were commenting. They're like, are you sleeping on a pull-out couch? And the answer is yes, I am sleeping on a pull-out couch for the past seven and a half years. I know, right? <laughs> I'm sleeping in my parents' library. I don't even really have a bedroom. Um, don't really have a closet, don't really have a place to put away clothes, so I've been living pretty minimally uh, without a lot of creature comforts. Why, you ask, why? Why don't you get a real bed? Why don't you move somewhere else? Well, as far as the bed goes and as far as the living situation, in order to do what I did with running raw athletically, in order to spend that much time training and racing and traveling to races, and doing the research that I was doing and the writing that I was doing. I mean, I was 60 to 70 hours a week, all of that. The training and training travel alone was probably 30 hours a week. Then the racing and race travel was probably another 8 to 10 hours a week. My research was 20 to 40 hours a week. Um, that's It was a huge full-time job, and I wasn't really making any money doing it, but I believed in it. Uh, I wanted to get the word out there. I wanted to get some great results that would last the test of time that people could say, yeah, look what he did on a vegan diet or look what he did on a raw diet and he's not a kid. So I made a lot of sacrifices and chose not to make money so that I could do that um, or at least not to work a real job. People think I make a bunch of money on YouTube and I do not. Um, I pay my car insurance with my YouTube money. That's about it. So, uh, yeah, there's a few people making a lot of money on YouTube. I am not one of them, and that's okay with me. I don't want to compromise my integrity. I don't want to change who I am and what I talk about in order to make more money. Yeah, I could make videos that would bring in a lot more subscribers. My videos lose subscribers. <laughs> They've just been plummeting. And what's up with the women fleeing? I used to have, like, 55% male viewers and 45% female viewers. And now I'm down to like 30% female viewers. Maybe it's the teeth. I don't know. But the women are fleeing from my channel. Uh, and the interesting thing is the more I talk about vulnerability, the larger my male audience grows. It's a good sign, I think. Right? Anyway, um, so not only did I make sacrifices to do running raw and to do this YouTube channel, I forgot about that. I don't know if you guys realize how much time I put into making these videos and how many videos I make that I never air. I spend a lot of time thinking about what I want to talk about and recording things and then realizing that I don't like it or I want to redo it, reshoot it, um, or sometimes the sound is bad. I'll make a video in the mountains and the wind is blowing the whole time and you can't hear a word I say. <laughs> So YouTube takes up a lot of time for me. It's probably 15 hours a week, minimum. Maybe more, maybe even 20 hours a week, just making these videos. And I'm getting enough money to pay my car insurance. That's it. So, and that's a continued sacrifice because I know a lot of you tell me that you benefit from my videos, so I don't want to stop doing that. Um, even though it's kind of, you know, it's a challenge for me to do that. But back to the bed. Uh... One of the things that I've said in other videos, if you're going through hell, keep going. Don't make yourself comfortable there. And I didn't want to make myself comfortable here. I didn't intend to stay here long. <laughs> I thought running raw was going to produce massive results right off the bat, but it took quite a few years. And in that process, uh, things got rather challenging. You know, it hasn't been easy living here and, and doing this and being isolated. And living with family is never easy, and my parents are both elderly, and my grandmother is almost 101 now. So there's a lot of, um, you know, caretaking that goes on here. Uh, it's not a bunch of kids living in Hawaii having fun, which would be awesome, but that's um, choosing to be here and support my family in whatever way I can. But back to going through hell. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger was in a movie, I think it was Arnold, uh, called Stay Hungry. 
And what I've found in my life is that when I make myself comfortable, my hunger goes away. When I give myself lots of creature comforts, my drive disappears. And being in this environment, a really stoic environment, um, I have learned so much. And some of my greatest insights come out of being in this environment, in this space. You know, I, I live in an environment that's really challenging, and then I walk outside and go into the mountains into a more challenging environment. And it's really changed me as a human being. But had I made myself comfortable, had I got, had I got a really nice bed and um, just treated myself to all kinds of luxuries and creature comforts, I probably wouldn't be the man that I am today. I would have given up a long time ago. So knowing that this is not ideal keeps me striving, keeps that drive alive, keeps me hungry, keeps me wanting to become a better man, keeps me focused on creating a better and better and better message rather than just being comfortable with the message that I was talking about six or seven years ago, which was okay, but in my estimation now it's pretty lame. So this has brought me to the next level. And it's not permanent. I'm ready. I've had enough. So in the next six months after I'm through paying for my teeth, I'll move on and uh, I'll have some more comfort in my life, but I'm not going to make myself too comfortable because then I won't be as effective in helping you. doesn't mean I need to suffer, but I don't want to be too comfortable. All right? And speaking of helping you, my Florida trip is coming together. So any of you that live in Florida, hopefully I'll be seeing you soon. Uh, my first scheduled talk is February 28th in Tampa at the Whole Foods there, and then I'm going to be doing one the next day in Tampa, uh, the next day in St. Petersburg, and maybe St. Pete Beach, and then I've got Naples and Fort Myers after that. And West Palm Beach will probably be in either February 23rd or 24th or March 4th or 5th. So I'll probably be doing six or seven talks in Florida. Uh, so that's coming together now. And I'm going to be bringing my new shirts down. So I'll be having some of those to give out. And I may be speaking at some universities down there. I'm working on a running talk. So not just a diet talk. The, the main talk that I'll be doing is uh, called Starting, Sustaining, and Succeeding on a Plant-Based Diet. But to uh, speak to university kids, I think I want to bring in the running aspect and talk about that a bit more. So leave me your suggestions. And let me know what you think I should do and talk about. All right? It's a long one. Sorry for that. Uh, yeah. And let me know what's up. Tell me what's going on with you. All right? I read all your comments. I don't always respond because I just get caught up in creating new stuff, but I do read all your comments, and I appreciate them. Thank you. And by the way, thank you so much for all the support that you showered on me with uh, the death of Running Raw video. I really appreciate that. I am so grateful. Uh, to have you as part of my community and I get touched <laughs> all right I will see you soon love you bye